Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how I hate Blue Monday. Got to work, black or sleeve on deep. He'll come to Would President Trump authorize waterboarding and other enhanced interrogation? techniques, even torture. I would be inclined to be very strong when people are chopping off other people's heads and then we're worried about waterboarding and we can't because I have no doubt that that works. I have absolutely no doubt. And so you it's bring back waterboarding. You mentioned waterboarding, which was such a big subject. I, don't, I haven't heard that term in a year now because when you see the other side chopping off heads, waterboarding doesn't sound very severe. Okay, I want to get a sense of what a Trump... Okay, so in other words, the idiots at ABC News are trying to turn him into a sadist. And what we have is common sense from Trump, which is why he's surging. He doesn't have a script in front of him. Welcome to the Savage Nation. That's not the only topic. It's only one. Hillary is the topic. Last week, I told you that Hillary's uh, campaign is the Hindenburg of our time. Now, if you want to Google the Hindenburg, you'll see it was a Zeppelin that unfortunately caught fire over New Jersey burst into flames and crashed to earth. Her campaign is the Hindenburg, and someone is smoking something inside that dirigible. And that thing is either gone up, or the Democrats know it's about to go up and crash to earth. And that's why they're saying anyone but Hillary. Now, they're talking about Joe Biden, that you heard. Uh, why anybody would want that schmuck to be president, I don't know. I have no idea. But nevertheless, anyone but her, because she's unelectable. Now they're talking about, could you believe it or not? You ready for this one? They're talking about the CEO of Starbucks. This is the same genius who came up with T-shirts where when you went in for a coffee, you're supposed to be lectured about race by an 18-year-old with pimples. They want him to be president. So the Democrats know through internal polling that uh, the dirigible is up and it's about to come down. I want to open a question up to Democrats only. Democrats only, and I know many of you listen to this show, you are Murano Savage listeners. You listen, but you don't tell your friends you listen. You're liberals who listen to me because I remind you of the common sense that once prevailed in America. Why would you not vote for Hillary? Because many of you won't vote for her. I, I meet liberals once in a while who say they don't agree with me, but they know that Hillary's finished. They hate her. Why? Topic one. Another topic I'm going to talk about today. I saw an article over the weekend in the New York Post why all the cool kids are bringing peace strips to bars. And so the idiots now in New York, I don't know what you want to call them, in their 30s are bringing pee strips to nightclubs and they're running into the bathroom to see if their urine is clear because they're fixated on the color of their pee. And why are they fixated on the color of their urine? Because they think it's an essential indicator of the amount of acid in the body. And so these fools, these fattists, are on these high alkaline diets. And I'm going to talk in great detail about something I know a lot about, which is nutrition. And I'm going to give you the lowdown on alkaline diets and how dangerous they can be and how they have really no effect on your health whatsoever. The fact of the matter is, I may as well start with it right now. Let me give you the take-home message. See, I know someone who's drinking a, uh, uh, an alkaline drink. Very intelligent person. It says 10 on the drink. 10. That means it's a pH of 10. You say, What? They're drinking alkaline water? That's how crazy this has gotten? Yes, that's how crazy this has gotten. Do they know what they're doing to their bodies? I don't think so. Let me just say this. Unlike other fad diets, the alkaline diet per se is actually quite healthy. See, I'm not reversing what I'm about to tell you. I'm going to explain why. It has nothing to do with alkalinity or acidity. Because the alkaline diet encourages a high consumption of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and healthy plant foods, and it restricts processed junk foods. But the, the idea uh, that by increasing the alkalinity of your urine, you're going to change the alkalinity of your blood is insane because your body won't permit that to happen. And I'm going to explain later on no matter what you do to the alkalinity of your diet, it only changes 
the alkalinity of the or the acid or alkaline uh, uh, levels of your urine, not of your blood. Because if it changed it in your blood, you'd be dead. You would die almost within an hour. That's how good your body works. So I'm going to talk about why all the cool kids are bringing pee strips to bars in a few minutes, whenever I get around to it, and I'll explain that to you. Of course, everyone's talking about Hillary. Everyone's talking about Obama with his mania for green energy. That's just to pay back the gangsters in the green business. Yeah, I mean, let's be clear. The reason he's targeting coal is because most of his big backers are billionaires and millionaires in the green business. The green racketeers are waiting on the sidelines to get paid back. Now, Obama has delivered a remark at a clean power plant event. I, one day I'd like to see Obama deliver a remark at a clean politician event. That would be the one I'd listen to. He's just a mouthpiece for the green industry. Big green. Big green. Here's another article. Remember the killing in Chattanooga a few weeks ago when a Muslim went on a rampage and killed four or five? Oh, we don't remember how many servicemen were killed because they were disarmed by Bill Clinton. Four or five of them were killed by a Muslim. Remember that? Well, it turns out that one of the officers who survived the shooting by the mad dog Muslim in Tennessee is being charged by the military for firing back at the Muslim maniac with his own gun. You see, the military doesn't, doesn't allow military men to have their own guns on base. And so this guy did the right thing. He fired back at the madman. And now the psychopathic, crazed military may give him a court-martial, I swear to God, for firing on the Tennessee gunman, who Fox News is calling the Tennessee gunman. 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 Like the gun did it. 855-407-282. These are some of the topics that I find interesting. And if you uh, want to join the conversation, the phone number is 855-407-282. Again, I'm asking liberals first, please. Please, conservatives, stay in the back of the bus where you belong today for a moment. Come on. Let the liberals go to the front of the savage bus and call as to why they'd vote for anyone but Hillary Clinton. Because there are many of them who have finally seen through her and they know that she's a disaster. She can't win, by the way. Let's begin with John in New York City on WABC. John, thanks for uh, taking the bait. Tell me if you would or wouldn't vote for Hillary. Uh, I absolutely would not. Okay, but you got to say why. I mean, are you, are you a Dem or a Repub? I'm a Democrat. Um, I, don't, I don't consider myself a liberal. I think uh, the title liberal is too far to the left. Um, you know, I, I, I listen to your show. I like your show. So that, that you said that was... But, John, I want to ask you something. I really don't understand this. You say you're a Democrat but not a liberal. Can you identify one Democrat who was not a liberal? Um... <laughs> they used to be conservative... De no, they used to be conservative Democrats who made the party whole. They were pro-American. They were pro-American business. They were uh, for champions of the America's the Ameri America's borders, language, and culture. There are none anymore. I don't know of any. But you know, and I also, you know, I'm I'm 42, so you know, Republicans back in the early 70s and the 60s, I, you know, obviously I wasn't around, but um, you know, I was told that that they were also more to the center. I, I think both sides are slowly moving away from the center, and both you know, moving out to the to the outskirts of their party. And I think, you know... Well, we could argue over that later, but the, the main point of today's opening is why you as a, as a Democrat would not vote for Hillary. But which of the above candidates do you think would meet your qualifications of being a Democrat but not being a super liberal? Would you think Joe Biden is any different than Barack Obama? No, no, you know, uh, quite honestly, uh, there isn't anybody. Uh, if I had, if the election was tomorrow, I probably wouldn't vote. My, I really wouldn't. I just know. Wow, that's interesting. So you, you definitely wouldn't vote for Donald Trump. No, I like Trump. I really like Trump. I, I he, like you said, he says a lot of things that a common says, a lot of things that he says. You know, I, I, I listen to him and I say, you know what? I, I feel the same way. You know, so that's why, you know... <laughs> wait a minute. So, but wait. But why wouldn't you vote for him then? Because, I, again, I, I, I don't... I don't trust I'll, answer, I'll answer your question. Because you come from a family of liberal Democrats and you'd be ashamed to admit that you stepped out of the fold. No, no. I'm the only Democrat in my family. Well, how did that happen? What, was it dietary deficiency in your infancy or what? No. 
<laughs> okay, come on. Cheap, sh cheap shot, but you have a good sense of humor. How did you become a liberal in, in a conservative family? Okay, so so the, the way it is, is, is the way I look at issues is I, I don't look at issues as, as really, a, you know, a right and left in that matter. What I look at them as is, is each issue is separate to me. And, and I kind of weigh it out, you know. Um, I, I don't like the Democrats going after after all this gun control, you know, but... but I how do you feel about how do you feel about open borders? Are you in favor of opening the borders to any immigrant who wants to come in? Oh, absolutely not. Put our military on the borders. All right. Now, do you live in New York City? Yes. Okay. You know what the Blasio's communist policies are doing to that city, don't you? Crime is out of control. The streets are filled with bums who are attacking people, urinating, defecating. Everybody knows that. It doesn't matter what their race is. They're all saying it's because of his crazy policies. Agree or disagree? Agree. Oh, we, need, we need a Giuliani back in, in New York. All right, so Trump is the Giuliani on a national level. It's the only, well, him or Ted Cruz, let's say. Even though Ted Cruz is in the pocket of the Koch brothers who want open borders, but we'll go into that at another time, they are both very good candidates. You're a good caller. You see, I did a, a reverse flow today on the Savage Nation. Now, before you go, question for you. I talked about the, the trendies in New York City who are bringing pee strips into bars to test the color of their urine. You don't carry pee strips with you, do you? No, absolutely not. <laughs> okay. You're such a good-natured person, I can't believe you're really a Democrat. Okay, it's the Savage Nation. We're off and running uh, to start with. I really did start the show in a strange way today. Thank you very much, John, in New York City. I asked Democrats only to please call at the beginning. Those of you who realize that Hillary's finished, why is she finished? I mean, the Dems are rumoring a Biden run, the, the, the head of Starbucks. Now they're talking about three others because their internal polling is showing that she, she will lose up against virtually any Republican a candidate who's uh, likely to be elected to the Republican side. And that I called, uh, that's why I said that her campaign is the Hindenburg of this election. And if you know what the Hindenburg was, it was a tragedy. I think in 1937, 38, 39, over New Jersey. You probably have seen the YouTube of it, which is the dirigible is coming in. Would you believe they used to have airships that were filled with helium in those days that came over from Germany, and they had a car underneath this huge blimp, and it floated across the Atlantic Ocean uh, on propeller-driven uh, propeller car underneath the, the blimp. And as it was landing in New Jersey... It caught fire, exploded, and fell to the ground. And the reporter is heard crying on air. That's when we still had reporters with a heart, a soul, and a mind. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So Hillary was originally the front runner. We always knew that she had so much baggage that eventually the baggage would... Uh, the suitcases would burst and the dirt would fall out on the ground, and it has. And so even the libs are saying, we better run someone else. She can't win. Inevitable no more. Clinton marched the party nod disrupted. So they're floating Joe Biden. They come up with this, I don't believe a word of it, that before his son died, he made him promise he'd run for office. I mean, who, who concocted that one as an embarrassment? That is such a fairy tale. And whoever did it should be embarrassed, by the way, to use a Joe Biden's deceased son to push his campaign is as cynical as it gets you can't confirm it or deny it but it smells you know to high heaven nevertheless uh you know why would biden be a good candidate i don't know the man is not known for anything he's sort of a yes man you know he's like the old uncle that's kind of not that bright that you know, kind of clods around the house and eats meatloaf and drinks you know just like what kind of what are they crazy that's the best they can do Yet they're even floating someone else now. The, the lunatic who runs Starbucks, that's the same Schmendrick who put out a, a campaign last, last spring of race matters. You're supposed to go into Starbucks and the barrister, the poor 18-year-old kid out of college who can't find a job, is supposed to engage you in a conversation about race. Another great ca candidate. Okay, so that's a loser. Now they're saying, well, maybe Elizabeth Warren will run. 
And the far left wing of the party is backing the lunatic uh, commie of the 1930s, Senator Bernie Sanders, who I'll have more to say about in a few minutes because Bernie Sanders is just a laugh line. That would be like running Groucho Marx for the presidency. Every time he speaks, it makes me feel better because I realize my accent is not so bad. So we're going we're gonna to play a little Bernie. Most people don't know who Bernie Sanders is, by the way. He's not yet registered anywhere. Try to picture him. I know that in scanning the Internet, you've seen him. He's like a small, old-time professor with a rumpled suit and rumpled gray hair. Speaks with a very heavy New York socialist accent. You've seen him. You've scanned him. Okay, so he's getting big crowds. He's raising money. And uh, we're going to have a little bit more to say about him. Now they're saying they want Al Gore to run or John Kerry. Can you imagine? John Kerry, the man who's given away the store to Iran. I say run, John, run. And run on your, run on your record, John. Run on your record because there's an article came out over the weekend. Again, I will get to it in the New York Post. Wait a minute. i got to get that article. Hold it. No, I can't find it. I have too many articles to deal with at once. I really do mean it. I've, I've over, overloaded myself. Where did I put it? Here. Iran publishes book on how to outwit U.S. and destroy Israel. And it came out from a man who reads Arabic. In this case, also reads Farsi. Amir Tahiri, New York Post. While Secretary of State John Kerry and President Obama do their best to paper over the brutality of the Iranian regime and force through a nuclear agreement, Iran's religious leader has another issue on his mind. The destruction of Israel. Ayatollah al-Khamenei has published a new book called Palestine, a 4 and 16 page screed against the Jewish state. A blurb on the back cover credits Khamenei as the flag bearer of jihad to liberate Jerusalem. A friend sent me a copy from Iran, the only place the book is currently available, through an Arabic translation, though an Arabic translation is promised soon. Obama administration officials likely hope that no American ever hears about it. And it's all about the madmen, the mullahs, the new friends of Obama and Kerry and Chuck Schumer and all the other Jewish congressmen like Schiff from California who has now joined the opposition. It's like voting for Adolf Hitler. I swear to God, what is wrong with these people? What is wrong with Jews in Congress they can't see that they're digging the grave not only of Israel, but of the world by giving Iran a nuclear weapon? Schiff, are you nuts? Where's the ADL now that we don't need them? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. I just want to say a word about how tragic and regrettable it is that we lost four Marines in an act of uh, senseless violence, uh, what is being called another instance of domestic terrorism. It's Stop terrible right when we so lose Marines anywhere. Mel, uh, there's Hillary Clinton melting down. She calls an attack by a Muslim fanatic on a recruiting center, two recruiting centers about three weeks ago, an act of senseless violence. I guess they were practitioners of the religion of senseless violence. Must be a new religion somewhere that I don't know about. An awful lot of members, uh, apparently. Religion of senseless violence. I mean, that takes away the M word and the I word. And that might permit the military to uh, speak about the enemy, the real enemy. Anyway, let's move back to what I started the show with today, which is Democrats only get at the front of the bus in the Savage Nation. Why would you not vote for Hillary? Because I told you they're floating other names. You know about Biden, Bernie Sanders. Now they're calling up Gore, Kerry, Warren, you name it. A lot of them out in the wings because the internal polling apparently shows that her campaign is the Hindenburg of the Democrat Party, and she can't win. She can't win against Cruz. She can't win against Trump. She can't win at all. No matter what the media will tell you, she can't win. And I, I'm asking you why you won't vote for her. No one in the media has done this yet. You haven't heard this yet. You probably, I don't know, maybe we'll hear it. It doesn't matter. I'm doing it, and it's original to this show. And, you know, <clears throat> it proves something as well to me, which I've long known from my local station in San Francisco. Remember, I live in a liberal bastion, San Francisco. So how am I rating so high on a liberal station for so many years? Not everyone who listens is a conservative in the San Francisco area. I knew this from the beginning. Early demographics showed that a large percent, about half of my audience, were liberal Democrats in San Francisco. And they listened because they wanted an intelligent, opposing viewpoint on most issues. Plus, they like my personality. 
And so I know that many Democrats listen to my show. One thing that you have to understand is that intelligence kind of shines through. And oafishness sinks the ship every time. I am not going to mention names. I'm not going to attack anyone else. But I got sick this morning listening to an oaf talking about Cecil the lion, laughing about his death, saying it didn't matter that he died, he's just an animal, then laughing at young people in New York who are projecting images of endangered species on the wall of a building, wanting to save these species, which are near extinction. And this oaf, this stereotype of an ugly, old, fat, dumb, white male, by the way, this oaf went on and on about how we shouldn't care about endangered species, they're just animals. I got so infuriated, I said to myself, how can someone pull a shtick like that in this year, in this late stage of human evolution? How can they be so insensitive to the world in which we live, the smaller world in which we live? That viewpoint, by the way, of animals are just animals, kill them if you want, eat them if you want, skin them alive if you want, put primates in cages and torture the poor chimpanzees if you want, they can't feel anything, that went out even when Teddy Roosevelt was president, which is quite a while ago. Teddy Roosevelt, a rock rib man, a real man of action, a hunter, uh, a warrior, he initiated conservation in America. He created the first national parks. He was a big game hunter who came to his senses and stopped killing these glorious creatures. Did you know that? And yet now here we are in 2015, when an oaf on the radio, an oaf, an absolute oaf goes on and on about <laughs> Cecil the lion would just, you know, <laughs> well, he would probably jump on his own mother. What's the difference? Good thing he's knocked off. And then on and on about young people who care about saving the few species that are hanging uh, by a thread, like making them into a mockery. No wonder young people don't listen to conservatives. It's a damn embarrassment listening to it. You understand what I'm saying to you? Now I know why Democrats are calling the show today because you hear it all. You hear my nuance, you hear my positions, and you understand that it's a bigger world than Dem Repub, left and right, you understand that. So now we're focusing on your candidate du jour, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, dead in the water. The Hindenburg analogy still works. Somebody lit up that cigar and that, that helium's about to blow. That dirigible's coming down. So they're floating Biden and everyone else, and I'm asking you, Dems only, why you wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton. I didn't ask Republicans to call. That would be a boring show. Hillary bashing is easy. But let's talk from the Democrat point of view. Why would you not vote for her? Why? Are there any women? Okay, Marcella, WABC again, New York City. You are a Democrat, Marcella? Yes, I am, and I live in New York City. So why wouldn't you vote for Hillary? Well, I have four words that I'd like to say. Honesty, integrity, decency, morality, and Hillary is bankrupt in all four areas. Well, I have heard from other liberals that they will not vote for her. I've heard it behind the scenes. People detest her. And I don't understand why, why uh, well, I do understand why the Democrat Party's in a panic. Because they know the same thing that the people themselves know. They're not voting for her. Mentioned she's bankrupt in all four important areas where a politician needs to have our trust, where a politician needs to be able to embrace decency and, and humanism. I mean, you look at the world, you look at the state of things, and that she called this shooting, she called this shooting just uh, an act of violence. Yes, yeah, senseless violence instead of naming the enemy. It's unbelievable. But they're all the same on this. They're all the same. Obama's the same way as her. Mm -hmm. All right, Marcella. I know we do need someone to lead us. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you who I would vote for because the, the issue right now is why you Democrats will not vote for Clinton. I'll do it for a few more minutes. But before we go back to that, because I think it's a good question, are there any people out there bring peace strips to bars? I want to get into that thing of alkaline diets and the absurdity of the alkaline diet and how it has no effect whatsoever on, on, the, on the blood chemistry, only on the urine. And if you are a person who's obsessed with the alkaline diet, I, I have about a 10-page a, a piece I wrote on this that I can quote from on, you know, some knowledge about it. I mean, facts. If you want facts, I can give them to you. So if you're a peace stripper, 855-407-282. Uh, Most of you don't even know what the pH means. I'll explain that. But the drug addicts in Hollywood are the ones pushing it. 
and they claim it can cure cancer, help you lose weight, it'll cure arthritis, and you shouldn't eat meat, wheat, refined sugar, processed foods, because they produce acid, which is bad for you. Well, I'll explain in details in detail some of these myths and some of the realities of these things on the Savage Nation. But first you need to know what pH means, not carry around a pee strip and start drinking alkaline water. Uh, anyway, before we do that, I mentioned the Hindenburg earlier and the tragedy of the Zeppelin coming down. I th- What was it, 1939? Does anyone really know? It's okay, we'll find it. 1937, you've probably seen it on YouTube. It was, again, it, it came across the airwaves from Germany. It had a large passenger compartment underneath it, which had beds and a dining room, if you can believe it. First class service in the air with a monstrous Zeppelin filled with helium. I think it was helium, right? And uh, or was it hydrogen in those days? I think it was hydrogen that exploded, right? They switched to helium, which is not flammable. Okay, so here is the Hindenburg disaster as reported on. That's before people were drugged to death in the media. That's a broadcaster, a newsman, a local newsman cracking up and crying as he watches the, 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 uh, the Hindenburg catch fire and people roast alive in front of his eyes. 1937. Take a look. Compare him now to the robots we have uh, in the media today with, with the lipstick and the, and the pancake makeup. No feelings whatsoever. No emotions except maybe fake hatred. But the reason I brought up the Hindenburg is because my analogy of uh, Hillary Clinton, her campaign is like the Hindenburg. It's on fire. The spark went off. No one, by the way, going back to that story just briefly, there were some stories that it was a sabotage that brought the Hindenburg down. And the gas, of course, inside the, the dirigible was flammable. And it was uh, flammable hydrogen at that time. Extremely flammable gas. So some said it was sabotage, and others say it was an accident that someone lit up a cigarette on the, on the dirigible and it sparked, or an electrical device caught fire. It doesn't really matter. The point is, is that it, it crashed to earth after catching fire. And I said her campaign is like the Hindenburg. I'm not going to you know, beat it up. That's the point. That's the point. We have no peace strippers yet. I thought that story would catch fire today on the show. I guess it's all the Democrats only listen. The younger progressives don't listen to the savage nation, those who run around with peace strips in their purses. All right, so I don't have a young demo with peace strips in their purses. I've lost my peace strip demo. You see that? Now, you heard of P1 demos in radio. <laughs> That's an in-crowd statement. We know in radio there's a P1 <laughs> audience, but I don't think it referred to this <laughs> particular <laughs> fetish of peace strips. Okay. So, now what do I want to do? Let's see, what do I want to do now? Uh, how about a joke? Someone sent me. Once upon a time, there was a king who wanted to go fishing. He called the royal weather forecaster and inquired as to the weather forecast for the next few hours. The weatherman assured him that there was no chance of rain in the coming days. So the king went fishing with his wife, the queen. On the way, he met a farmer on his donkey. Upon seeing the king, the farmer said, Your majesty, you should return to the palace. At once, because in just a short time, I expect a huge amount of rain to fall in this area. The king was polite and considerate. He replied, I hold the palace meteorologist in high regard. He is an extensively educated and experienced professional. He gave me a very different forecast. I trust him, and I will continue on my way. However, a short time later, a torrential rain fell from the sky. The king and queen were totally soaked. And they were embarrassed. Furious, the king returned to the palace and gave the order to fire the weatherman at once. Then he summoned the farmer and offered him the prestigious and high-paying role of royal forecaster. The farmer said, Your Majesty, I do not know anything about forecasting. I obtain my information from my donkey. If I see my, monk, my donkey's ears drooping, it means with certainty that it will rain. So the king hired the donkey. And so began the practice of hiring asses to work in the government and occupy the highest and most influential <laughs> positions. <laughs> I think that's a funny story. I mean, come on. Does everything have to be a, you know, a Nobel Prize winning statement where your heart drops? Nah. I have a sign in front of me on, on the Savage Nation. It's August, by the way. This sign has been here for six months. You know what it says to me? My own hand. Be practical. No rage. Intelligence and humor. 
I have violated this four out of five days over the last six months. But I'm trying to comply with my own notes for the month of August. I'm going to retrain myself. No rage, intelligence, and humor. I'm going to try it, Robert. I'm just going to try it. I don't know know if I could live up to it. Because I think I'm on the verge of pulling a... uh, Who's the guy who's away for a month? Thank God he doesn't. He can't steal my show. Glenn, Glenn the cry, Glenn the cry baby is gone. Yeah, he came up with a sickness shtick that he's away for the month for sick. All right, it's a good racket to go away for August, but I'm not a psychiatrist. But I wouldn't mind maybe for the month of August to go somewhere. The problem is there's nowhere to go, so I don't go anywhere. If I could find a vacation spot that would be more entertaining to me and more fulfilling than being on the air with you, I'd take a month off or two weeks off. But since this is the only release I get from life, the radio show, it's unlikely I'll take any time off this month except for a day here and there. There's no better place to go than this radio show. Well, the thing is, though, I have a studio in Los Angeles. I could broadcast from any one of hundreds and hundreds of stations around the country, so that's not true. Maybe I'll go to Boise, Idaho for a week or something. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. The world is a crazy place. It's getting sicker. Pictures of hunters posing with dead animals that make you want to hunt them down. I mean, forget Cecil the Lion. Now there's a sick woman, a mental case, uh, hunting uh, basically captive animals, thinking that they're brave and tough. It's sickening. These are are psychopaths, basically. These are homicidal psychopaths who gussy up their homicidal urges by hunting defenseless large animals on private reserves in Africa. Albeit that some of these animals are old and will die eventually or near, let's say, the end of their lifespan, to permit them to be hunted like this, in some cases injured, not killed, suffering for hours if not days before the human beasts finally finish them off, is an example of homicidal human beings, incidentally. And now we have the sickness over here of the peace strips I mentioned. People are obsessed with their their, uh, alkaline level. You hear this? Obsession, 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 obsession. Manny on WABC, what do you make of this peace strip alkaline business? Yes, uh, isn't this high alkaloid diet a way around the drug test for cocaine for those who test positive? Now they could claim some sort of legal kind of precedent because, you know, cocaine is an alkaloid base, and I think that's what shows up. Well, wait, wait, hold on. Let's slow down. Alkaloid is not the same as alkaline, Manny. Uh, uh, Cocaine is an alkaloid but alkaline refers to the pH, not to uh, the alkaloid that you are referring to, but it's close. I hear what you're saying. I think what you're implying is that people who want neutral urine are doing it not so much for the alkalinity of their urine, but to, to mask drug tests as well. That's a separate story. It's the Savage Nation, more intelligence on the airwaves than possible. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how I hear Blue Monday. Got to work, lack of sleep all deep. He'll come to the. Now let's move to the commie who wants to be president. He'd be laughable if he wouldn't, wasn't laughable. The only reason I like Bernie Sanders is because I hope he undermines Hillary Clinton. Because he's actually expressing what she is. Bernie Sanders is Hillary Clinton in a pair of dirty pants. 
So here's Bernie Sanders. He goes before a group of Hispanic lobbyists. I forget the name of their pressure group who want open borders. They want every Mexican, Guatemalan, El Salvador and Honduran, Nicaraguan to walk into America. They want no borders. And he speaks to them about open borders. And he says, no, I wouldn't open the borders. And they're shocked. Well, wait a minute, but you're a socialist. Bernie Sanders is against open borders. I want you to listen to us. This is fabulous. This is where the rubber meets the road. Here's Bernie Sanders shocking even Michael Savage in, in a, a shard of sense came out of his mouth in 14. Should we have a completely open border so that anybody can come into the United States of America? If that were to happen, which I strongly disagree with, there is no question in my mind that that would substantially lower wages in this country. When you have 36% of Hispanic kids in this country who can't find jobs, and you bring a lot of unskilled workers into this country, what do you think happens to that 36% of kids who are today unemployed? 51% of African-American kids. I don't think there's any candidate for president, none, who thinks that we should open up the borders. So even the commie, Bernie Sanders, I, I can't believe it. I don't know how even... You could see why he's popular. A, he has an impossible accent that's comedic. He makes me sound like I'm speaking the King's English. That's number one. His accent is so heavy and so New York 1930s that he makes me sound like I'm Prince Charles's cousin. That I was born in Shropshire. I grew up grouse hunting and fox hunting, which I didn't. But nevertheless, Bernie Sanders is against open borders. So the Hispanic lobbyists were shocked. Ooh, what do you mean no open borders? You're one of us. We love you because you're to the left of, of Hillary Clinton. Can you imagine Bernie Sanders in, in Air Force One walking up the steps and trying to salute the Marines after hating the military his whole life? They're going to have to train him. I can just imagine the training session. I'm going to do an imaginary session of, okay, God forbid there's a fluke and Bernie Sanders wins. It'll be like the gardener with uh, Peter Sellers becomes president by accident. All of a sudden, Bernie Sanders is thrust into the presidency and the man has to learn how to salute. He'd probably poke his eye out in the training session. How could that man learn to salute? He was never even a Cub Scout. All right, try it again, Mr. Sanders. Take your right hand, huh? Take the right hand and snap it to your eye. Oh, and he hit himself in the eye. No, no, they have to put like a, a glove on his hand to prevent him from poking his eye out. Try it again. All right, try run it again. You got the cameras rolling. All right, take 25. Bernie Sanders saluting the Marines as he boards Air Force One. All right, go, Mr. Oh, he knocks himself in the ear. All right, let's cut the salute out. We're going to pass an executive order. Presidents don't have to salute Marines on the way into Air Force One or Marine One. All right, next. Now, could you imagine him tra training him how to walk up the steps to Air Force One? Impossible to believe that a New York street socialist, he cannot learn how to walk up those steps. Impossible. I'll have to change it to an escalator. That he's used to from Bloomingdale's. Yes, indeedy. Bernie Sanders is now polling ahead of Hillary Clinton uh, in the same places that de Blasio polled ahead of everyone, mainly amongst the vagrants, the pickpockets, and the homeless who elected him to power in New York. And here we are. Here we sit. New York is de declining uh, under this uh, commie mayor to the level uh, New Yorkers haven't seen since Dinkins ran the city. Dinkins ran this. That's when you had the squeegee men rubbing dirty uh, rags on, on windshields every time cars stop. You know, it's happening again. And uh, Obama is the equivalent of Dinkins on, on the national stage. He's sort of rubbing our windshields in the smoke and mirrors of his campaign, which is an ongoing event. Here's a news story for those of you into the news. Uh, bus drivers for Apple and Yahoo demand $27.50 an hour. You heard me. Five months after unionizing, 75 bus drivers for Apple and Yahoo voted Saturday for a proposal that would increase their wages to $27.50 an hour and provide them with new benefits. Okay, there you go. Eventually, you run out of other people's money. Although in the case of Facebook, I don't think you could ever run out of Zuckerberg's money. Nor of Yahoo or of Google. They have all the money in the world. So I don't think $100 an hour would affect those companies. Go for it. Go for $100 an hour as a bus driver. Why not? 855-407-282. The question is carrying over from the last hour of Democrats only. Why won't you vote for Hillary? But we're open to the other topics of the day. 855-407-282. Let's broaden it up a bit. Here's some headlines for the Savage Nation. And Democrats, again, pay careful attention because your future is at stake. The United States is about to issue more green cards than the populations of Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina combined. Let's see what else. Uh, who wins and who loses under Obama's stricter power plant limits? Well, 
I covered that story with my own headline of his announcement on steeper emissions cuts from U.S. power plants. And my headline says it all. One savage headline is worth a thousand words. You want to hear it? Obama pushes green energy plan to pay back donors. End of story. Let's move on. Let's move on. Dot savage. Joe Biden is 90 percent in on decision to run for president after son Bo urged him to before he died. I am not buying the Bo part of it. We all have sympathy for the loss of a child. Bo is a great guy. He died too young. But believe me, I don't believe the cover story that before his son died, he, he said, Dad, run for the presidency. It sounds so cynical to me that it's right out of a bad movie. Barack Obama's green plans could cripple America's economy. Duh. What do you mean could? <laughs> okay. And now we move on to the Savage Nation. We did Bernie Sanders. We did emission cuts. We did Iran publishes a book on how to, wit how to outwit the United States and destroy Israel to reclaim Muslim lands. Oh, you don't know the, the mindset of these sickos. You think that they're like you and I. You think that the psychos in Iran are like the rest of the people on the earth. You have no idea. It's not just about destroying Israel. It's to reclaim what in their mind were Muslim territories lost to the infidel that must be taken back. These include Israel, large parts of Russia, Europe, almost one-third of China, the whole of India, and parts of the Philippines and Thailand. That's what the, reg, uh, the psychos in Iran think is the just place for the new Muslim empire. And now the Ummah Obama, Uma Obama is actually helping them achieve that goal along with quizzling congressmen like Schiff in California and Charlie Schumer of New York, who is no doubt negotiating as we speak to try to squeeze every drop of benefit he can out of going over to the other side. And how could you vote for a Democrat after this? I don't understand. I just don't understand it. Okay, Alvin, John, Kathleen, Sammy, and Chris are saying they will not vote for uh, Hillary. And why? And let's begin with Kat Kathleen here in San Francisco on KSFO Radio. Welcome to the program, Kathleen. Why wouldn't you vote for Hillary even though you're a Democrat? Well, I'm actually a new Democrat, and I re-registered uh, from independent to Democrat specifically so I could vote in the primary. But specific to your question about voting for Hillary, I kind of just think she's, uh, I feel her, she's sort of a soulless automaton. And uh, I just, she doesn't resonate with me at all. But I registered as a Democrat so I could vote for Jim Webb. And I actually called to ask you to comment on what you thought about Jim Webb. You mean Jim Webb is the former Navy secretary, correct? Yes, yes. And a, and a former naval commander, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, well, th those are to his credit. And if there were a single, if there were a single Democrat who might be somewhat patriotic, which I'm unsure of, it would be Jim Webb. Yeah. If there was <laughs> one Democrat, if there's one Democrat who I could trust would actually take America's side in the war against radical Islam, it would be Jim Webb. I cannot see any of the others prosecuting the war of all wars, which we are involved in, by the way. Yes. Thank you for the call. Thank you for the call. By the way, over the weekend, is getting so complicated that I couldn't follow it, I swear to God. Obama has authorized the use of American air power to back up the Syrian rebels who we trained, of which there are 60, in, his war, in the war against not ISIS, but against Assad. And take a guess who Obama's Syrian rebels are fighting alongside to take out Assad with the U.S. Air Force. ISIS. I told you that's why American warplanes have never been used to blow up the ISIS convoys. I told you that's why Israel has not blown up the ISIS convoys. I saw through this months ago. As horrendous as ISIS is, they are an ally of the United States and Israel, whether you know it or not, according to not what I think, but what I see going on. Now, if that makes sense to you, explain it to me. Why would the United States of America actively help ISIS defeat Assad when Assad, as horrendous as he is, does not pose an existential threat to the United States of America? Why would they support ISIS, which allegedly wants to conquer the world? Why? 
What kind of madness is this? That's what I said to myself over the weekend. It's getting very difficult. I'm telling you. It's getting very difficult to understand how the people can watch this going on and not even know what's going on. But I guess they count upon pundits like myself to explain it to them. And I'm serious about that. I mean, many of you read the, uh, the esteemed uh, writers in this Atlantic and the Schmelantic, the New Yorker, the New Yorker, the New Yorker, I'm a New Yorker, I'm a corker, I'm a squawker. You read all of those things. But, you know, sometimes 10,000 words is harder to understand than a few choice uh, words which explain it all. So when they try to trip up Trump over the weekend on ABC, Jonathan Carl, another esteemed journalist, a real esteemed German try to trip, dermatologist try to <laughs> trip up Trump. I want you to play clip two again. Would you please listen to how Trump, in simple language, cut Carl's legs out from under him. Listen to two. Would President Trump authorize waterboarding and other enhanced interrogation techniques, even torture? I would be inclined to be very strong when people are chopping off other people's heads and then we're worried about waterboarding and we can't because I have no doubt that that works. I have absolutely no doubt. And so you bring back waterboarding. You mentioned waterboarding, which was such a big subject. I, don't, I haven't heard that term in a year now because when you see the other side chopping off heads, waterboarding doesn't sound very severe. Bingo. End of Jonathan Carl. Another exposure. Now, there's another thing Trump said, which has gotten some play today, which I thought is worthy uh, of replay, which is taxes. And clip four is very, very important. Please listen. I fight like hell to pay as little as possible for two reasons. Number one, I'm a businessman, and that's the way you're supposed to do it. And you put the money back into your company and employees and, and all of that. But the other reason is that I hate the way our government spends our taxes. I hate the way they waste our money, trillions and trillions of dollars of waste and abuse. And I hate it. And I'll be probably the first candidate in the history of, well, right of politics within this country to say it. I try, and like every, by the way, like every single taxpayer out there, I try to pay as little tax as possible. And again, one of the big reasons is I hate what our country does with the money that we pay. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Welcome back to the Savage. You know that any, any uh, rock and roll singer of the 50s would have been a better president than Obama because they made people happy. They brought people together. And I, I stand by those words. You take any rock and roll singer of the 50s, put race out of the picture. They would have been better for America as president than Obama, what he's done to this country. Even if they left everything alone and just try to keep things as they were and just mildly fix the economy, which was broken by the big boys so that Obama can win, and then let, didn't touch anything else. Baltimore wouldn't have burned. Shall I go down the list? I mean, this guy is a, like a destructive force, like a scythe. It's like the Grim Reaper Obama. A new Quinnipiac poll. I don't know where they can't they rename their poll to Indian poll or something. Why was it Quinnipiac? A new Quinnipiac poll. Can't they just change it to Native American poll or upstate New York poll? Quinnipiac. A new Quinnipiac poll shows that American voters want Congress to reject the Iran deal by two to one margin, two to one margin. Charles Schumer, are you listening, dummy? Why well, do you care about the American people? A bunch of schmucks to you. You're negotiating to see what you can get out of the deal. That's so. Whatever Obama throws you, you'll take. Another bootlicker. Today, Schiff threw in with the, uh, Iran, the Iran side. Another Jewish guy. Could you believe Schiff knows that the deal is giving Iran the bomb? It's a threat to Israel's existence. And Schiff, who collected loads of money from AIPAC over the years, now suddenly came out today saying, hey, hey, I'll vote for it. It's not a good deal, but uh, it's the best I can do. That's all. This is the way the world works. It's all politics all the time. There's no ethics. There's no morality. There's no sanity. Nothing. Zero. Nothing. All what they can get out of the deal, like a weasel. Just a weasel, that shift. That shiftless shift. Shiftless shift. Okay. Let's get those old calls going on the Savage Nation. Marsha on WBAP on the issue of pH strips. Please tell us why you use them. I use them.
because I had acid reflux and I had developed this burning sensation in my mouth. Nobody could tell me why my mouth burned. And I went to the dentist, the doctor, and finally at a health food store, the guy said, take, use these pH, these pH drops to make your water more alkaline. And All right, but do you know that, did you know that food affects the pH of your urine but not your blood? Did you know that? Yeah, well, yes, I did. Okay, good. Then you're an intelligent pee strip user. Okay. And what what is what is pH? What does it mean? Well, uh, acid levels, I guess. I mean, I think about the pH in it. Well, okay, I'm not trying to trip you up. I'm a good teacher who tries to make you right rather than wrong. The bad teacher is trying to make the, the student wrong rather than right. pH means per, percent hydrogen. Zero to seven is acidic. Seven is neutral. Seven to 14 is alkaline also known as base. And many people are now monitoring the pH value of their urine using test strips to make sure that it is alkaline over 7. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. We're talking about all the news uh, of the day. And here's one that should make even the most ardent Obama watcher say this can't be true. The uh, Obama administration has signaled it may intervene next week in a civil lawsuit in which 11 American families won a potential billion dollar judgment from the Palestinian leadership over a series of bombings and shootings by Palestinians that killed or wounded dozens of U.S. citizens, right? The families won a $218 million judgment in February after a seven-week trial in Manhattan Federal Court in which a jury found that the PLO and Palestinian Authority were responsible for a string of attacks from 01 to 04 that killed 33 injured hundreds. A 1992 law that requires damages in such cases to be tripled, as well as interest on the award, would push it to as much as $1.1 billion. Well, take a guess which side the Obama administration is on. The Palestinians, of course. Would you expect it to be on the side of the families injured by the Palestinians? Last month, the Department of Injustice, which had previously not been involved in the 11-year-old case, informed the court it was considering filing a statement of interest in the case. So there it is. There's your new Attorney General, Loretta Lynch, appointed by Al Sharpton personally, throwing in with the PLO against Americans who lost property and family to terrorist bombings by the PLO. There is an administration which claims to be fighting terror, planning to weigh in favor of the terrorists. There's your Obama administration. So when I ask you, if you're a Democrat, why you won't vote for Hillary, I'm telling you to think very carefully about which Democrat is much different than Hillary. And then I also raise another issue, which is why is your President Obama suddenly authorizing the use of air power, U.S. air power at that, off our carriers, to support the Syrian rebels that we train, 60 of them in total, by the way, to fight <clears throat> not ISIS, but to fight Assad. What in the world is going on? Can you follow this? The U.S. Air Force is finally going to weigh in on the war against not ISIS, but against Assad, who is fighting ISIS. So which side is the United States on? I've told you for a long time now, this is crazy. And I also told you that the reason ISIS has not been de decimated by Israel or the United States is because they're actually a de facto army of both parties, in my estimation. They certainly don't like the kidnapping, they don't like the murder, they don't like the slavery. But governments are so corrupt and so cynical that they consider kidnapping, murder, and enslavement, I get, and beheading, setting people on fire in cages, as collateral damage, I suppose. Rodney on KSFO Radio, go ahead, please. Can you make heads or tails out of this? I, as best as I can tell, Michael, is, uh, as you know, Russia was protecting Assad because they have a naval base in Tbilisi in northern Syria there. And Obama's reluctant to finish Assad off for that reason. You know, Sergei Lavrov and all that agreement. Yeah, that but I, I, well, let's, let's, let's discuss this. 
Syria is a client state of Russia. That is true. Russia has a major naval presence uh, in that protectorate, so to speak. That is true. Don't you think that Putin would engage the Russian Air Force and military if the U.S. ramps up its uh, backing of uh, ISIS to bring down Assad? I think Obama, well, perhaps they would, Michael, but I think Obama's going to let ISIS take out Assad, and then that will take Russia out of it, and then Obama could come in and wipe out ISIS after that. So that's their strategy, is let ISIS take over Syria, and then they think that they're going to then take down ISIS once. How does that work? Why would ISIS be more vulnerable once they have captured an entire air force and possibly uh, a chemical weapons? Why, what sense does that make? Well, it, it opens up Obama to attack the, the governing body, per se, of Syria if they get Assad out of there, because that takes Russia completely out of the picture. And you just leave ISIS there, which is going to be an undesirable. Then you would probably have the Russian Air Force coming in in a joint thing with the United States to wipe out what's left. And who would take over? I have no clue. It's a pretty mad maze down there, uh, over there. And I can't tell you how disturbed I am to read that U.S. air power is being used against Assad, who is a monster, instead of against ISIS, which is, from my analysis, is a far graver threat uh, than Assad. I, as far as I know, Assad never said he wanted to take over the world. On the other hand, ISIS wants to create a new caliphate and take over the world. So which is a greater existential threat in the long run? It's got to be ISIS, not Assad. I agree, Michael. I agree. I know, but we're running nothing. We're running nothing. The community organizer and Al Sharpton are now running the world. A guy who got, had the nerve, this moron Al Sharpton, this street thug, gets up two weeks ago and starts talking about global warming I, if I played it for you again, you would say that you made it up. You made it up. You can't believe anybody of this idiocy would ever be invited into the White House a hundred times. He actually said, the carbon affects minorities more because it affects minorities more because the carbon and other pollutions affect minorities more. This was a speech given from the White House. This is what the country has come to. Somebody who would have been flunked out of a seventh grade classroom is now dictating to the president who the attorney general should be, what his policy should be against the policeman, and of course now he's an expert on climate. It's astounding to me how everything is upside down in Brobingdang. And Brobingdang, of course, is a reference to a long, long time ago piece of literature that no one has read. Anyone know what Brobingdang is? Of course you do. If you were educated before, oh, 1970, you know what Brobingdang is. Robin Dang comes from uh, a certain novel. Does anyone know which one it is? Robert, are we getting any Robin Dang callers? Everyone knows what that is, except those who use peace strips. The only thing that those who use peace strips know is that Gwyneth Paltrow is the greatest scientist in the history of the United States of America. That Gwyneth Paltrow, although she never graduated the sixth grade, uh, knows all about climate science, nutritional science, medical science, uh, humanistic science, uh, whatever science you want to know, the experts can be found in Hollywood. Anyone who uses pee strips should have their head examined, not their urine. <laughs> I wish that they could put out a strip where you can examine someone's brain. If they, if you breathe on it and it turns a certain color, you're arrested immediately. Uh, in in which case we'd be safe probably for a little while. If we had, if we had, well anyway, that's not going to happen. Okay, 855-407-282. We still got people calling on why they wouldn't vote for Hillary. And these are Democrats, by the way. So let's take a few of these people. Mm, Alvin, WJR in Detroit, Michigan. Go ahead, please. Are you a Democrat, Alvin? Mike? Yes, I am a Democrat. I've been raised one. My parents were one. That's all, yeah, that's all I've ever known. But listen, just have a good listener to you. And for the last month, I've been listening to you and I don't know why I followed and so they've done nothing but lie to us and look, look at, you know, what, what they've done to in, in the office. So, no, I would not vote for Hillary for nothing. But would you, as a lifetime Union Democrat, Alvin, and you're not alone, would you ever cross over and vote for a Republican, even if you like his policies? Yes, I'm, I'm planning on voting for her. You see, you got to remember something about America. We have a secret ballot. Unlike dictatorships where ballots are not secretive, you can go in that voting booth and you can do anything you want. 
You can cross over. You can cross out. You cannot vote. You understand that? And why a secret ballot is so critical to the survival of the the shards of democracy that are left in this country? You, you understand that, right? Okay, 855 Alvin, thank you very much. 855 472 It's actually August already. What month is this? August? I, I'm asking myself the question on the air. It's already the 3rd of August in the year 2015. Did you ever think you'd live this long? That's a crazy question. No, even the guys under 30 said no. They thought the world would be over by the year 2000. Remember the Y2K people? In 1999, they all were telling us the world was coming to an end with Y2K. And then they were telling you to buy canned wheat. And, and also, I mean, I called it for what it was. I said, come on, this is a crock of garbage. But, you know, all right, people like prophecies. They like Nostradamus and stuff like that. It's entertaining. There is a prophecy that someone mentioned to me the other day that's worth mentioning. Because I was talking about what's going on in the world with the hatred towards white people. Uh, that is being fanned uh, primarily from inside the American administration. Yes, that's true. You may not see it, but I see it. And I can, I can prove it in five easy steps. The war on police, you know what that really means. That's a wink-wink job. That's a racist thing. Anyway, I was uh, talking about that, and I got an email which said the following. They said, do you remember the prophecy, the, the Mayan prophecy in 2010 it was, about the calendar and there was going to be a collapse i don't know if you remember the whole mayan thing that also came and went and it didn't nothing collapsed remember but at the time they interviewed an ancient an old mayan woman who said she had a dream and she said i see the future and in the future we will be missing our white brothers that was chilling that was a shocking chilling statement but I don't want to dwell on that too much. But the fact of the matter is, unless something drastic is done quickly, how does this all end? How does this end when you have an administration that is siding with terrorists in the case of the PLO, are siding with the burners and the destroyers in, 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 in Ferguson or in Baltimore? Tell me how this ends. WJR John, we have a winner on line number six. Go ahead, please. Hi, uh, the... Um uh, Blood and rang for the Giants in Gulliver's Travels. Yeah, I asked before, does anyone know where Brobbingdang is? And we have one caller who knows the book, Gulliver's Travels. Who wrote Gulliver's Travels? Jonathan Swift. Okay, good. That's point two. You're going to get a, a copy of my novel, Countdown to Mecca. Now, here's the last and most poignant question. Jonathan Swift was a satirist and a genius at that. How did he end up at the end of his life? Ooh, uh... I don't know. I'm going to shoot in the dark. Probably broke and penniless. <laughs> Close. He ended up really well. He ended up in a madhouse, totally insane, because society rejected him. Well, do you remember in, also in the book, he landed with a gloved-up drib who could, were magicians, and they could bring people from history back from the dead. No, I don't remember that part of it. I remember Brobbing Dang. Tell us about that part of the fable. They, uh, he landed, and this society, they could bring people back from the dead, and so he could then converse with all the monsters from history that we think are now heroes, and all the heroes from history that died as insane people. So, I think Well, uh, we're living in upside-down times. Obama has turned the world on its head. He has elevated terrorists now to victims and turned victims into terrorists. He has taken our heroes and turned them into questionable villains. And he has taken villains and turned them into, into victims. It's all upside down, John. And I don't think Hillary would make it any better, frankly. And I think that's why many people are saying no. Absolutely not. So I send you a copy. Stay in the line of Countdown to Mecca. I have one, uh, two, three, about ten more copies to give away before the end of the week. Eight, five, five, no more calls on Brobbing Dang. This is Michael Savage reporting live from San Francisco. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is an upside-down world. Your White House 
is going to intervene on the side of Palestinian terrorists who just lost an 11-year trial for acts of terror, and uh, the U.S. is going to come down on the side of the murderers. May intervene next week in a civil lawsuit in which 11 American families won a billion-dollar judgment from the Palestinian leadership over a series of bombings and shootings that killed and wounded dozens of U.S. citizens. So here is your government siding with Palestinian terrorists over its own citizens. Well, they side with ISIS. They side with Iran. What will it take for you to understand who he really is? Many even never watched the series Homeland. If he came out with a fez and a prayer rug and did the call to prayer, the Muslim call to prayer in the White House, most of you would still be in denial and say, why, he's a Christian. Why, he's on our side. Or he's not really a Muslim. He's just doing that to uh, show Muslims that he likes them. He's not really working for the other side. Here's the most powerful man in the world coming out on the side of Palestinian terrorists after an 11-year trial. 11-year trial. It was finally won by the families. And he's coming out to see if he can nullify the filing. That's the Department of Justice under Al Sharpton. Jerry on WABC, go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Uh, I'm a registered Republican, and I am voting for Bernie Sanders at this point. And I want to be very clear. I'm not, I'm not hysterical. I'm not an extremist. But I look at this country's problems, and, and you speak about it every day, Michael, the toxic mix of government and big corporations leaving this country away from democracy, away from freedom. And Bernie's really the only candidate who's addressing these problems in a serious way and giving real proposals about breaking well, up. Well, come on. You know Bernie could never pull that off. Even if he became president, do you actually think he can change the course of how American politics works? Well, I don't know if he can or can't, but he's really the only one addressing it. And you agree, Michael. I mean, the way we had our system now with six institutions, financial institutions, with assets equal to 60% of our GDP. It, I agree. It, when you have Facebook and Google and Microsoft controlling elections, it's a bad thing. And, and when he talks about breaking up things that are too big to fail, if it's too big to fail... But do you actually think a leftist like Bernie Sanders would take on Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Yahoo? Do you actually think that would happen? Absolutely. He is the only one who is taking the corporations on. Every, we know everyone the else. only way to break up companies like Facebook and Google is to do what Teddy Roosevelt did, which is to break up the, the monopolies. They're fundamentally monopolies. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Facebook is a monopoly. Google is a monopoly. And the only way to save this country is to do what Teddy Roosevelt did. You know, his campaign, one of the, his campaign slogans was bust the trust. Did you know that? See, leftists don't understand, but the very... Th the very corp corporations that they seem to like are now exactly what they don't like. Facebook and Google need to be broken up under antitrust legislation. You think that'll happen under Obama? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Yeah, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. It's August at the Hotel Ozone. August at the Hotel Ozone. The nation sleeps. Everyone's on vacation. The psychiatrists are in France, more specifically in Provence, or this year the uh, latest uh, provincial city du jour. Perhaps it's in Italy somewhere where they're sampling wine and chocolate. And they will come home telling you how wonderful, how wonderful the Europeans are. How grand it was to live in a, a provincial village in a $7 million country house attended by uh, servants. And how much better it is in France uh, 
or Tuscany than it is in the United States of America. Yes, indeedy. Poor old United States of America. Suffering at every turn. Kicked around like a used shoe. Well, here's a little news for you in the America of today. Texas Christian University student punished for criticizing Islam and the Baltimore riots. It just came out from Todd Starnes of Fox News. I like Todd's work, but he attacked Trump. I don't like him anymore. I mean, he's got to go along with the program of uh, Rupert Jr. Or he wouldn't keep his job. But job, it generally does a good job. All it took was 140 characters for TCU to suspend the conservative student who posted a series of social networking posts that insulted the Islamic State. Oh, my. That's worse than cutting off a head to the commies who run the colleges. Insulting the Islamic State, the Baltimore thugs, and Mexicans. TCU banned Henry Vincent from most campus activities, ordered him to perform 60 hours of community service, and attend a diversity training class run by thugs themselves, no doubt. See, the 19-year-old is a member of the College Republicans and the Young Americans for Freedom, two great groups. And he was told by the so-called university that his conservative views were inappropriate. Harry told uh, Todd in a telephone interview from his home in Maryland, they're trying to make me out to be the classic, bigoted, hateful white male. That's the complete opposite of what I am. The university's fascist comment came in a prepared statement stating the following. When students' conduct violates the university's behavioral standards, they're subject to a disciplinary process and will be held accountable for their actions. Zig Hell! On April 29th, TCU sent Harry a letter accusing him of violating the university's code of student conduct. He was accused of infliction of bodily or emotional harm and disorderly conduct. The charges stem from a half dozen tweets he had posted online referencing radical Islam along with a Facebook message about the Baltimore riots. Here's what this young man wrote. These hood rat criminals in Baltimore need to be shipped off in exile to the Sahara, Sahara Desert. Maybe then they'll realize how much we provide for them. Welfare, college tuition, Obama phones, Medicare, etc. close quote. In regards to radical Islam, the poor student wrote, this is clearly not a religion of peace. And for that, the Nazi fascists who are now running universities have banned him from campus activities, ordered him to perform 60 hours of community service, and attend a diversity training class. This is what's known as thought crime. This is what Orwell warned us about. Thought crimes, now controlled by the thought police, put in power by the out-of-control psychotics called liberals. So when I asked in the last hour, will Democrats only call and tell me why you will not vote for Hillary, whose campaign, I said, is the equivalent of the Hindenburg, I got lots of Democrats calling for two hours now. But you tell me there's another Democrat who's going to stand up to the fascists who are running the universities today, who can actually stand up and be counted in the war of wars, the war that we're all going to fight or lose, and if we lose, there's 10,000 years of darkness. Do you understand what we are facing? Okay. Okay. WBAP, Terry, Dallas, Texas, hour three. You're up. Go ahead, please, on the Savage Nation. Uh, is it my turn? <laughs> Yes, it's your turn. Go ahead, please. Uh, I would like to know what the difference is when ISIS goes on the Internet and gets all these young men and with their propaganda twist their heads around and it makes them go yell and ah, ah and kill people. What is the difference in that and some 21-year-old boy in Carolina watching the racist, bigoted, hypocritical, lying, dishonest American news press and goes into a church and kills people? What's the difference in those two things? Well, you're making a leap here and saying that the psycho who killed those poor black people did it because he watched the news. Well, you, but if you look at the American news media, and it's not just the news, it's all of it. It's so racist and so bigoted and so dishonest, it's incredible. As a matter of fact, I don't... Well, well I, I don't know where you're coming from. I really don't know which side you're on, what you're saying. Let's look at the news story that just came out. A student at Texas Christian University was suspended because he posted social networking posts that insulted ISIS. Which side would you be on on that? I'm not for ISIS under any circumstances. They're murderers and cowards. All right. So why would a, a university ban this student because he did so in a private tweet? What is it their business? 
I think you put it quite well. They're a bunch of commies. Right. Well, they're like ISIS. The universities being run by these bigoted liberals are like ISIS themselves. They want to make everyone conform to their psychotic, perverted liberal viewpoint in plain English. The perverts took over the universities, and now they've twisted everything. But the point I'm trying to make, Mike, is that a lot of Americans, especially younger Americans, that don't have a real background, don't understand it, they listen to all this bigoted horse manure that comes out over television, and they go out and they do things based on that. And that kind of nonsense... Well, I, I, can't even res I can't really respond to what you're saying, because I think we need to take each news story separately... I think that you're saying something I would agree with, but I, I dare not say I agree with you for fear that I may not agree with you. So thank you for calling the program. It's funny, I, I wrote a little essay about this yesterday and lost it. My computer swallowed it last night at 5 o'clock. I was typing it, AOL crash, the worst email in the history of the world. Everyone tells me not to use it. I know it's old, but I had it from the beginning. It's horrible. It crashes every other day. It gobbles up the computer. I wrote about a, a couple of thousand word essay on this very topic, and I wouldn't say it's for my next book. I dare not say that because I don't want another book. Maybe it was a monologue for today's show. But what happened, you see, was I was walking around an American mall in the middle of the day, and I looked at the average white suburbanite in an American mall, misshapen, clothing that would make your hair stand up, no clothing, no outfits. I never saw anything like this. Wherever I turned, I was revolted. I felt like I was in Brabandang. I said, what country am I living in? Nobody dresses to go anywhere anymore. Restaurants, cargo shorts. They go to the theater in cargo shorts, wife beater shirts. I, I couldn't believe it. All right, so I'm not Mr. You know, outfit. But the thing is, you look at the people's vacuous stairs, and you see empty people walking around, and you see a nation that's empty. A nation with no foundation anymore, no Christianity, no religion. They live for consumerism. They live for hedonism. They're told that if they enjoy themselves, that's a sufficient reason for living. Now compare that with the fanatics in radical Islam who have a distorted view of their religion, and they believe that if the whole world were to follow this ninth century view of Islam, it would be a better place where women have no freedom, Women are slaves fundamentally in radical Islam. Their uh, genital parts are mutilated. You know all of this, don't you? Or it's been kept uh, from you by the American media. They behead people. And it's a world of the 9th or 10th century. I said you have two worlds competing right now for dominance. One is the world of hedonism and consumerism. And the other is the world of fanatical religion. And I said, take a guess which one wins in less than 100 years. Take a guess which one wins. Uh, I'll let you figure out the rest of the essay. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So the Iran deal, the Iran deal, U.S. is banned from knowing the details of the Iran nuclear inspection agreement, and this clown in the White House expects us to support it. Well, the opposition to this giveaway of the atomic bomb to Iran has doubled since June. The Ayatollah, the new friend of Obama, has published a guide to destroying Israel while railing against the great American Satan. Did you know that? Meanwhile, on a domestic front, your president and his minions of anti-Americans are scheduled to issue more new green cards in the next 10 years than the populations of uh, Idaho, Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina combined. Wait, it gets better. The same report warns of a backlash against whites in the United States of America and the Latinization of the United States of America by your administration. Can you not understand what this will do to this country? Can you not understand that the Latinization of the United States that's ongoing is not necessarily going to be a productive thing, that it may actually create racial disharmony rather than racial harmony? 
And that, that, that may be exactly what Soros' uh, minions want. Are you aware of the fact that Muslim immigration puts half a million girls at the risk of genital mutilation? You know what female genital mutilation is? Practiced by some of these throwbacks who are being brought in? Throwbacks. Throwbacks to, uh, let us say, a thousand years ago. Why would you bring people like that into a country? Genital mutilation is an abomination outlawed by the United Nations and by the United States of America. And yet we're bringing in primitives, primarily from Africa, African Muslims, who practice genital mutilation on young girls, destroying their capacity to ever have sexual pleasure. Who in the world would support this but a sick government, a mentally ill government? You can read about it yourself, and I'm sure many of you have read about these things yourself. But the fact of the matter is that the Schumer deal is a big deal. They say Schumer will oppose the Iran deal knowing that Obama can override the veto. So it's a moot point. He's already traded off something already. Anyway, let's go to the callers. Obama uh, is the issue now and why he's backing ISIS against Assad. BAP, Dallas, Lee, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Yeah, Dr. Savage, the reason Obama is backing ISIS is because he wants to box Israel in with the worst of the worst of the Islamic barbarian. And I don't think for a moment that once ISIS has overthrown Assad, that uh, Obama is going to lift a finger to drive them out of Syria. Neither do I. I think the last caller was mistaken in thinking that he would do so. I think that ISIS is Obama's um, factotum army in the Middle East. That's what I've come to understand. But I don't understand why Israel hasn't acted against ISIS. They could have done so several different times, and they haven't. Why is that? Well, probably because Obama has threatened them. Uh, I yeah, know that, uh, right, withholding weapons. That's right, withholding weapons that if they do bomb the ISIS uh, training camps or convoys, the U U.S. would withdraw support of Israel. That's probably true. But it didn't work in Egypt. He didn't get to box them in on the Egyptian side, as we well know. But that doesn't stop him from trying to just completely surround Israel by the worst of the worst of the barbarians. Well, that's right. Obama has one, a few other pieces of business that are unfinished. Uh, gay rights, gay marriage, check. Socialized medicine, check. Crippling the energy industry, check. Crippling the police, check. Go down the list. But a few things remain. Seizing guns, well, he hasn't been able to check that off the list yet. And the punch list also contains dividing Israel into two nations, correct? He needs another Nobel Prize, doesn't he? Well, that's not yeah. going to work. I'm, a, I'm a, a great supporter of Israel. I'm not Jewish, but I support them 100%. You probably well, support Israel. You probably support Israel more than most liberal Jews do. Yes, absolutely. And that's the part that eats me alive. It's the part that gnaws at me like a, like like a. a well, I won't say anything more. It eats me alive, and I know where the, where it comes from. It's sickening. It's sickening. But my friend, thank you for the support of the Savage Nation and of America, and of course of Israel as well. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. This is the Savage Nation. Many, many topics. We started with Democrats only. Why won't you vote for Hillary? We then went into other topics. The power plants, the flooding of America with illegal aliens, the uh, overwhelming number of green cards that your president will be giving out, the nuclear deal with Iran. Many, many things to talk about on the Savage Nation. Time for one quick call. John on WVNN Radio. John, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Yes, Dr. Savage. I tie everything that, that you have discussed in the last minute with your earlier comment about the vacuous stares of the poorly dressed mall rats wandering around with no direction. This <laughs> is an over-medicated nation. These kids, these young people, are on so many uppers, downers, Xanaxes, Ritalin. They are absolute stooges, and this is what... I, but, John, listen, to John, these were not youngsters I was looking at. These were ordinary white suburbanites, some of them in their 40s and 50s. They looked like automatons to me. They didn't, they're not the kids that we're talking about. They look like they have no purpose to live from day to day, no reason to get up in the morning. 
and I'm comparing a society that has no reason to get up in the morning with a group of fanatics who have every reason to get up in the morning, which is to kill or convert those who have no reason to get up in the morning. That's the point I was trying to make. And unless, here we go again, unless this nation regains its footing with regard to religion, unless this nation rediscovers its Christian roots, it is doomed. It was when Christianity was driven out of the marketplace by the demons who have taken over every avenue of the universities and of academia and have made religion ugly and dirty. When that happened, into the breach, into the vacuum, came radical Islam. That's an essay I'm working on. Only Constantine can save America. Only Constantine can save America, only he's dead. He's been dead for quite a long time. Who was the new Constantine? Well, we're all waiting for him. I don't think it's Donald Trump. I'll be back. It's the Savage Nation. Join. Say a word about how tragic and regrettable it is that we lost four Marines in an act of uh, senseless violence, uh, what is being called another instance of domestic terrorism. It's terrible when we lose Marines anywhere in the world, but to lose four in Chattanooga, Tennessee, is just uh, uh, heartbreaking. There's Hillary Clinton melting down. She calls an attack by a Muslim fanatic on a recruiting center, two recruiting centers about three weeks ago, an act of senseless violence. I guess they were practitioners of the religion of senseless violence. Must be a new religion somewhere that I don't know about. An awful lot of members, uh, apparently. Religion of senseless violence. I mean, that takes away the M word and the I word, and that might permit the military to uh, speak about the enemy, the real enemy. So Hillary was originally the front runner. We always knew that she had so much baggage that eventually the baggage would, uh, the suitcases would burst and the dirt would fall out on the ground, and it has. And so even the libs are saying, we better run someone else. She can't win. Inevitable no more. Clinton marched a party nod disrupted. So they're floating Joe Biden. They come up with this. I don't believe a word of it. That before his son died, he made him promise he'd run for office. I mean, who, who concocted that one as an embarrassment? That is such a fairy tale. And whoever did it should be embarrassed, by the way, to use a Joe Biden's deceased son to push his campaign is as cynical as it gets. You can't confirm it or deny it, but it smells, you know, to high heaven. Nevertheless, uh, you know, why would Biden be a good candidate? I don't know. The man is not known for anything. He's sort of a man. You know, he's like the old uncle that's kind of not that bright. What kind of, what are they, crazy? That's the best they can do? Yet they're even floating someone else now. The, the lunatic who runs Starbucks, that's the same Schmendrick who put out a, a campaign last spring of race matters. You're supposed to go into Starbucks and the barrister, the poor 18-year-old kid out of college who can't find a job, is supposed to a engage you in a conversation about race. Another great ca candidate. Okay, so that's a loser. Now they're saying, well, maybe Elizabeth Warren will run. And the far left wing of the party is backing the lunatic uh, commie of the 1930s Senator Bernie Sanders. Now they're saying they want Al Gore to run or John Kerry. Can you imagine? John Kerry, the man who's given away the store to Iran. I say run, John, run. And run on your, r run on your record, John. Run on your record because there's an article that came out over the weekend. Iran publishes book on how to outwit U.S. and destroy Israel. And it came out from a man who reads Arabic. In this case, also reads Farsi. Amir Tahiri, New York Post. While Secretary of State John Kerry and President Obama do their best to paper over the brutality of the Iranian regime and force through a nuclear agreement, Iran's religious leader has another issue on his mind. The destruction of Israel. Ayatollah al-Khamenei has published a new book called Palestine, a 416-page screed against the Jewish state. A blurb on the back cover credits Khamenei as the flag bearer of jihad to liberate Jerusalem. A friend sent me a copy from Iran the only place the book is currently available through an Arabic translation, though an Arabic translation is promised soon. Obama administration officials likely hope that no American ever hears about it. And it's all about the madmen, the mullahs, the new friends of Obama and Kerry and Chuck Schumer and all the other Jewish congressmen like Schiff from California, who has now joined the opposition. It's like voting for Adolf Hitler. I swear to God, what is wrong with these people? What is wrong with Jews in Congress that they can't see that they're digging the grave not only of Israel, but of the world by giving Iran a nuclear weapon? Schiff, are you nuts? Where's the ADL now that we don't need them? 
Of course, everyone's talking about Hillary. Everyone's talking about Obama with his mania for green energy. That's just to pay back the gangsters in the green business. I mean, let's be clear. The reason he's targeting coal is because most of his big backers are billionaires and millionaires in the green business. The green racketeers are waiting on the sidelines to get paid back. Now, Obama has delivered a remark at a clean power plant event. I, one day, I'd like to see Obama deliver a remark at a clean politician event. That would be the one I'd listen to. He's just a mouthpiece for the green industry. Big green. Big green. Here's another article. Remember the killing in Chattanooga a few weeks ago when a Muslim went on a rampage and killed four or five? Oh, we don't remember how many servicemen were killed because they were disarmed by Bill Clinton. Four or five of them were killed by a Muslim. Remember that? Well, it turns out that one of the officers who survived the shooting by the mad dog Muslim in Tennessee is being charged by the military for firing back at the Muslim maniac with his own gun. You see, the military doesn't allow military men to have their own guns on base. And so this guy did the right thing. He fired back at the madman. And now the psychopathic, crazed military may give him a court-martial, I swear to God, for firing on the Tennessee gunman, who Fox News is calling the Tennessee gunman. 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 Like the gun did it. Last week, I told you that Hillary's uh, campaign is the Hindenburg of our time. Now, if you want to Google the Hindenburg, you'll see it was a Zeppelin that unfortunately caught fire over New Jersey, burst into flames and crashed to earth. Her campaign is the Hindenburg, and someone is smoking something inside that dirigible. And that thing is either gone up, or the Democrats know it's about to go up and crash to earth. And that's why they're saying anyone but Hillary. Now, they're talking about Joe Biden, that you heard. Uh, why anybody would want that schmuck to be president, I don't know. I have no idea. But nevertheless, anyone but her, because she's unelectable. Now they're talking about, could you believe it or not? You ready for this one? They're talking about the CEO of Starbucks. This is the same genius who came up with T-shirts where when you went in for a coffee, you're supposed to be lectured about race by an 18-year-old with pimples. They want him to be president. So the Democrats know through internal polling that uh, the dirigible is up and it's about to come down. Anyway, let's move back to what I started the show with today. Why would you not vote for Hillary? Because I told you they're floating other names. You know about Biden. Bernie Sanders, now they calling up Gore, Kerry, Warren, you name it. A lot of them out in the wings because the internal polling apparently shows that her campaign is the Hindenburg of the Democrat Party and she can't win. She can't win against Cruz. She can't win against Trump. She can't win at all. No matter what the media will tell you, she can't win. And I, I'm asking you why you won't vote for her. No one in the media has done this yet. You haven't heard this yet. You probably, I don't know, maybe we'll hear it. It doesn't matter. I'm doing it, and it's original to the show. You understand what I'm saying to you? Now I know why Democrats are calling the show today, because you hear it all. You hear my nuance. You hear my positions. And you understand that it's a bigger world than Dem Repub, left and right. You understand that. Here's a little story that you may have missed, because it didn't make it to your local liberal rag. Police kill more whites than blacks, but minority deaths generate more outrage. This was a little-known story I found with the data to back it up, by Valerie Richardson, God bless her, of the Washington Times. The headline, police kill more whites than blacks, but minority deaths generate more outrage. That's since the demagogue came to power. That's since the police hater came to power. That's since the uh, America hater came to power. The uh, outrage has begun. Because this is how the hater got into office. This is how the most evil man in American presidential history became president, strictly based on hate. But he's so good at it, you don't know he's hating. I've never seen a master like him. Look, as someone in the business, the talking business, I got to take my hat off to Obama. This guy can spew hatred and make it look like he's blowing bubbles. He gets up there and spews hatred. It looks like he's blowing soap bubbles. He is a master. I think people will study this man for hundreds of years to come to see how such an overt hater could get so far so fast and do so much damage to a great nation in such a limited amount of time that's all we're living in very sad depressing times we're living in a time when the government has turned on the people 
We're living in a time when the government has turned on the unborn. We're giving a t living in a time when the government media complex has turned on everything good and uh, exalts everything evil. And it's not an easy time for strong people. It's a time that makes strong people ask themselves if they can take it anymore. That's the kind of time we're living in. Don't think I don't know it. I have a thermometer into the heart of America. I have a th Believe me, I know what's going on. I, do, I know exactly what's going on. So here's where we are. And the hatred of Trump is amazing because it's showing you who people really are in the media. Forget about the haters on the left. They're given. They're given. Anyone who attacks the status quo to them is a, is a threat. You know, I put up with it for 21 years, so it's nothing new to me. It's like rolls off me like a, a duck to a duck in water. But when you see the faker, Krauthammer, calling Trump a rodeo clown, when you see the apparatchik rove, you know. Now, Jeb Bush was what you'd expect him to be. We need another Bush like we need a, I don't have a good analogy. I No, I have a good analogy. We need another, we need another Bush in the presidency the way we need another Bush in the presidency. That's about as close as I come to tell you how much we need another Bush in the office of the presidency. They didn't have enough with two, with two terms? Not enough two of them? We need three? We need a third term now? How about the Clintons? We didn't have enough for them? You, what more do you need to know about the Clintons than you learned in the first eight years? What do you expect to happen? Does a leopard change her spots? Okay, so Perry attacked them, obviously, because Perry's in the 1% batch. Pataki attacked Trump because he's a nobody. No one even knows who he is. Romney attacked Trump because Romney's a loser. Christie attacked Trump because he couldn't lose enough weight to run for office. Thus far, I'm all in for Trump. I have been from the beginning. I don't mince words. Till otherwise, I find something I don't like, I won't be for Trump. Because A, he can win, and B, I'm getting 80% on the dollar from him, from conservative values. I know personally he loves the military, and he loves America. That's good enough for me right now, compared to what else we got running there. The first debate is next Thursday. It's a Fox News or um, moderators, including Martha Washington. She'll be draped in an American flag. Chris Wallace, uh, Meatloaf Jr., who I don't trust, he's too weaselly. And then the one I do like is Brett Baer, a real journalist. This guy's great. He's the only one I trust. Now, here's the punchline. Are you ready? Hold on to your desks. Take a guess who is sponsoring the Fox News debate in which Trump will be there and the other 73 candidates. Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. That's all. I rest my case. So it's now Facebook plus Murdoch versus the Republican Party. I can't wait to hear this setup question. So, Mr. Trump, do you think all Mexicans are rapists or only a few of them? That'll be, that, that'll be Meatloaf Jr. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Yes, indeed. Bernie Sanders is now polling ahead of Hillary Clinton in the same places that de Blasio polled ahead of everyone, mainly amongst the vagrants, the pickpockets, and the homeless who elected him to power in New York. And here we are. Here we sit. New York is the declining uh, under this uh, commie mayor to the level uh, New Yorkers haven't seen since Dinkins ran the city. Dinkins ran this. That's when you had the squeegee men rubbing dirty uh, rags on, on windshields every time cars stopped. You know, it's happening again. And uh, Obama is the equivalent of Dinkins on the national stage. He's sort of rubbing our windshields in the smoke and mirrors of his campaign, which is an ongoing event. Here's a news story for those of you into the news. Uh, bus drivers for Apple and Yahoo demand $27.50 an hour. You heard me. Five months after unionizing, 75 bus drivers for Apple and Yahoo voted Saturday for a proposal that would increase their wages to twenty-seven fifty an hour and provide them with new benefits. Okay, there you go. Eventually, you run out of other people's money. Although in the case of Facebook, I don't think you could ever run out of Zuckerberg's money. Nor of Yahoo or of Google. They have all the money in the world, so I don't think $100 an hour would affect those companies. Go for it. Go for $100 an hour as a bus driver. 
Why not? The question is carrying over of Democrats only. Why won't you vote for Hillary? But we're open to the other topics of the day, 855-407-282. Let's broaden it up a bit. Here's some headlines for the Savage Nation. And Democrats, again, pay careful attention because your future is at stake. The United States is about to issue more green cards than the populations of Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina combined. Let's see what else. Uh, Who wins and who loses under Obama's stricter power plant limits? Well, I covered that still with my own headline of his announcement on steeper emissions cuts from U.S. power plants. And my headline says it all. One savage headline is worth a thousand words. You want to hear it? Obama pushes green energy plan to pay back donors. End of story. Let's move on. Let's move on. Dot savage. Joe Biden is 90% in on decision to run for president after son Bo urged him to before he died. I am not buying the Bo part of it. We all have sympathy for the loss of a child. Bo is a great guy. He died too young. But believe me, I don't believe the cover story that before his son died, he, he said, Dad, run for the presidency. It sounds so cynical to me that it's right out of a bad movie. Barack Obama's green plans could cripple America's economy. Duh. What do you mean could? Okay, and now we move on to the Savage Nation. We did Bernie Sanders. We did emission cuts. We did Iran publishes a book on how to outwit the United States and destroy Israel to reclaim Muslim lands. Oh, you don't know the, the mindset of these sickos. You think that they're like you and I. You think that the psychos in Iran are like the rest of the people on the earth. You have no idea. It's not just about destroying Israel. It's to reclaim what in their mind were Muslim territories lost to the infidel that must be taken back. These include Israel, large parts of Russia, Europe, almost one-third of China, the whole of India, and parts of the Philippines and Thailand. That's what the psychos in Iran think is the just place for the new Muslim empire. And now the Umma Obama, Umma Obama is actually helping them achieve that goal along with quizzling congressmen like Schiff in California and Charlie Schumer of New York, who is no doubt negotiating as we speak to try to squeeze every drop of benefit he can out of going over to the other side. And how could you vote for a Democrat after this? I don't understand. I just don't understand it. A new Quinnipiac poll, I don't know where they, can't they rename their poll? A new Quinnipiac poll shows that American voters want Congress to reject the Iran deal by two to one margin. Charles Schumer, are you listening, dummy? Why do you care about the American people? A bunch of schmucks to you. You're negotiating to see what you can get out of the deal. That's so. Whatever Obama throws you, you'll take. Today, Schiff threw in with the, uh, Iran, the Iran side. Another Jewish guy. Could you believe Schiff knows that the deal is giving Iran the bomb? It's a threat to Israel's existence. And Schiff, who collected loads of money from AIPAC over the years, now suddenly came out today saying, hey, hey, hey I'll vote for it. It's not a good deal, but uh, it's the best I can do.